Does Space Ghost kick ass? I just picked up the first issue of the new Space Ghost series from Dynamite, written by David Papos with art from Jonathan Lau and I believe lettering from Taylor Esposito, because I saw Gail Simone tweeting about it, and holy shit, it's fantastic. Go buy it from your local comic shop right now. I'll tell you exactly why in just a sec, but I think Space Ghost is my new hyperfixation now. So my name's Joe. Thank you for being here. Let's talk Space Ghost. I was first introduced to Space Ghost through clips of the talk show Space Ghost Coast to Coast on Adult Swim. As were most of you watching this, I imagine, if my viewer age statistics are to be believed, but Space Ghost actually started life as an animated Saturday morning superhero in the Space Ghost and Dino Boy in the Lost Valley series, which were unrelated segments of the same show, where Space Ghost and his two teenage sidekicks, Jan and Jace, with their pet monkey blip, fight villains across the cosmos. The classic Zorak, Brack, the Creature King, the Black Widow, Moltar, and Metallus. Usually, Jan and Jace would get kidnapped and then be saved by the heroic Space Ghost, who would save them with his invisibility belt and power bands that shoot, like, different kinds of energy blasts and the like. We didn't see Space Ghost again until 1994 with Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Space Ghost Coast to Coast was a surrealist animated show created for Cartoon Network in 1994 by Mike Lazo and honed to greatness by Andy Merrill, chock full of the weird non-sequitur humor that would go on to imbue the rest of the adult swim block that would later be started by William Street, the, the producing company, in the early 2000s. It's a parody of the traditional late night talk show format. Hosted by a slightly reimagined Space Ghost voiced by George Lowe, the animated Space Ghost would interview live-action guest stars that are beamed into a monitor beside Space Ghost's desk. Their answers were frequently cut up in post to make the interviews really awkward and funny. You can see how the DNA here carried forward to future series in Adult Swim, like uh, the Eric Andre show. Brack and Zorak are on the show, they're his captured co-hosts, and they provide a lot of choice banter. I was initially introduced to the show by clips from the relaunch on Adult Swim that brought new episodes into the world in the 2000s, but I've since gone back to watch full episodes of the original run and the relaunch, and they're great, man. It's, it's a great time. Aside from watching the occasional rerun of the show, or hearing lines from the show used in lo-fi hip-hop songs on SoundCloud, I didn't think about or encounter Space Ghost again. Well, okay, it, I mean, obviously until the day before I wrote the script. Apparently, there was a DC Comics series that came out briefly that sounds like it was a super gritty and dark reboot of the character. I, I mean, you know, 2017 was full of that. Uh, I listened to a summary about it, and I haven't tracked it down to read yet. And I might wait on it, actually, until after the new Dynamite run concludes. I don't get the feeling this will be quite as dark. Well, in the same gritty reboot as in fashion kind of way, I've read that the DC run is, and uh, I just want to relish this vibe for now. We'll see where it goes. But I'll, I'll get to the DC comic run eventually. Okay, and that brings us back to the comic. Like I said, I saw Gail Simone talking about it on Twitter about how awesome the new Space Ghost was, and I was like, what? Space Ghost? Coast to coast? And when work got out, I hauled ass down to our local comic shop, Captain Comics, if you live in the Treasure Valley, really, you have to stop in there. They're all amazing, just awesome shop. And I run to the new releases, scooped up a badass-looking variant, ran back to the counter, slapped it down, proclaimed, add this to my box, please. And they were like, yeah, good choice. And then I went to my girlfriend's house, and I bust in, and I'm like, Space Ghost, coast to coast, waving the comic around like a loon. And I sat down to read it, and damn. Gail and the Captain Comics staff were not kidding. This issue is fantastic, and I can't wait for the next one. I'm not going to go beat by beat through the story and analyze it here, but I will on Patreon once folks have had a chance to buy a copy for themselves. But I will try to talk about it in broad strokes here, because seriously, you're going to want to read this. If you want to go in completely blind, skip ahead, no worries. I completely understand. Also, stay off Twitter, because a lot of people are talking about it there. It opens with this summary. Across the vastness of space, evil flourishes in the darkness between stars. With territories spread far and wide across the Galactic Federation, pirates and hijackers have ransacked these distant colonies with cruel disregard for the innocent scientists living within them. 
Yet there is a cosmic vigilante who meets out justice across the spaceways, bringing vengeance to those who prey upon the defenseless. They call him the Space Ghost. And I think this might be a perfect, or at least near perfect, issue one of a comic. Taking a legacy character like this, it would be easy to front load a lot of the backstory or ungracefully shoehorn in the teen sidekicks and the monkey, but Pepos handles it with elegant pacing. This story is from the teen's point of view, actually, and opens up with them being put into a very dangerous situation, recently lost their father, and are being attacked. Space Ghost appears and helps them, and it brilliantly sets up the rest of the series. We get introduced to a classic villain from the series, we're led along a frenetic, action-packed, beautifully drawn story, we meet the heroes, and we have a good reason for them all being together. And we're left with a lot to look forward to. I even teared up a bit at the end because I'm a big softy. Here, okay, I'm I'm going to spoil the last panel. You can skip ahead. I'll wait just a second. Okay, so the kids are grieving, just saw some horrifying stuff, and believe they're all alone. Jan says, there's no one left to help us, Chase. Everyone else is gone. Then Space Ghost does this. He reaches down to take his power bracer away from Jan and says, No, not everyone. I'm here. Come on now! Heck, yeah, I am here for this! This is my trope! Yeah! Oh, let's go! It's it's great, okay? Go buy it. I'm really looking forward to seeing where they take this. Just so glad I added it to my pull box. We'll be talking about the future issues on my Patreon, and that will probably make its way here when the series reaches a good stopping point, and I'll inevitably be gushing about them as they come out on online on my social platform, or whatever. You can find those in the description. Thank you for watching. Shout out to my patrons, The Dollar Tacos, Tom, Vesuvius, Death's Warzone, my $5 Phillips, thank you. The I Love You Friend of Patrons, Driz Fan, Meg, I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Oh, go watch my video about Batman's bathroom habits next. I'll see you next time.